So what is it about ballistic missiles always being the choice of champions for manned spaceflight? What does the Cold War have to do with the race to space? More on this on another episode of Vintage Space. How's it going everybody? This is Chad from Vintage Space and today's episode we are going to cover the Redstone Missile. The first American ballistic missile in development during the early to mid 1950s was called the Redstone Missile. Not to be confused with the Mercury Redstone rocket which actually carried astronauts into space. This vehicle was specifically the flex America needed to stay ahead of the nuclear and missile arms advance that the Soviet Union had made during the Cold War era. Werner von Braun, the German scientist behind the creation of the V-2 rocket, which was formerly known as the A-2, inherited an important role here for the development of this liquid-fueled rocket, which would later give birth to the future exploration missions. Von Braun identified this would be the pathway to achieving his dream of sending humans to space. Little did they know, this foundation would later be responsible for the 1958 and 1961 spaceflight milestones of sending Alan B. Shepard into a suborbital flight and the first American satellite into orbit. The astounding success of this missile created a perfect resume for modification of this missile to be made to support human spaceflight. As a missile, the Redstone had a range of 200 to 250 miles and carried either a conventional or nuclear warhead. The Redstone made its first successful flight in 1953 and became operational in 1958. This SRBM, also known as a short-range ballistic missile, was officially named the PGM-11 Redstone. This missile had the capability to lift around 6,300 pounds or 2,800 kilograms to around 200 to 250 miles in range. The Redstone was powered by a Rocketdyne North American Aviation 75-100 A-7 engine gulping ethyl alcohol and liquid oxygen as its fuel of choice. This engine had a thrust of 350 kilonewtons and later engine iterations would see other fuel mixtures such as Hydyne. This engine would later power the Jupiter C rocket, the rocket that placed Explore 1 into low Earth orbit. The Redstone was a direct descendant of the V2 rocket and created what is called the Redstone rocket family. This surface-to-surface -surface missile for the U.S. Army was created by the ABMA or Army Ballistic Missile Agency based at, uh, this was based at Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. However, the Redstone program was a source of conflict between the Army and Air Force due to their differing nuclear warfare strategies. The Army preferred using small warheads on mobile missiles as tactical battlefield weapons, while the Air Force was responsible for the ICBM program, program aimed for large cross-continental missiles to swiftly inca incapacitate the Soviet Union's infrastructure and capacity to wage war. This missile ended up being showcased in Grand Central Terminal, New York City. The purpose was to alleviate fears of the Cold War of a nuclear missile attack by the Soviet Union or North Korea. The missile was assembled in the concourse on July 7, 1957. They had trouble getting this rocket inside the building, and the variant they used was a bit too high to directly fit into its upright space. So now you know how an Army ballistic missile turns into a rocket of choice for NASA spaceflight. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Please subscribe if you would like to see more vintage spaceflight content. And also liking the video helps keep the video available for people who need to see it the most. I am your host, Chad, and I will see you out on the launch pad.